come inside this network RV caravan that we've just fitted a 200 amp hour lithium system, 2600 watt inverter, 720 watts of solar. It's a full off grid setup, so come check it out. All right, guys, we're now inside the network caravan. So you can see I'm sitting under the bed here. We have fit the full off-grid setup in what I'd say is about half of the space here. Um, there's room on top of it as well. I have seen people get little boxes and stuff like that fit in here so you can still use the storage on top of it. But we'll run you through each little bit in here. Um, so first up, the obvious, we've got the two big Enerdrive BTEC batteries. So they're both 200 amp hour lithium batteries. So giving us a total of 400 amp hours of lithium. Um, we go over here to the inverter, so that's an Enerdrive 2600 watt transfer inverter. Um, so that basically, in a nutshell, um, takes the 12 volt power stored in your batteries and converts it to 240 volt power. So you can then use all your power points or your GPOs in your caravan and run all of your appliances. So it's a 2600 watt, so we have no issues running the air conditioning system. Um, toasters, kettles, induction cooktops, air fryers, coffee machines, um, charging laptops and all of that sort of thing. They will all go off the 2600 watt inverter. Um, over the back here, we've got the Morningstar TriStar solar controller. So this one's a 45 amp hour solar controller. Um, we've got all the solar on the roof feeding into that one there. Um, so there's 480 watt panels up on the roof. Um, we also add in the Enerdrive 40 amp DC to DC charger down here. Um, so the reason we do the two is that the while we're driving and if we're charging from the car's alternator, which this is set up to do, you will get dual input. So you'll get input from the alternator via the DC to DC charger and you'll also get input from the solar panels on the roof um, via the solar regulator. We also wire up an external solar input. Um, we'll put some footage over of that, but that is run into the DC to DC charger. Um, so what that means is if you're in a shady spot, you can plug an external panel into the output that's on the outside of the caravan um, and you will still get solar input from what's on your roof plus the panel that is, or the external panel. Um, so we always are really conscious of making sure you're getting the best input into your batteries under various conditions. So cloudy, driving, we wanna give you the max input at any point in time. Um, the third way of charging the system is an an AC charger. So that is taking mains power from your house or from the caravan park, um, and you plug it in to um, a power point and you get charge your batteries via the 240 volt AEC charger that is in here. Um, you can't really see them, they're sort of mounted in under here. We've got the EPRO shunt, so that connects to the batteries and the EPRO monitor that is up on the screen here. And we also have a battery protect guard over here. Okay, up in this little control panel area um, over the seats, we have added in the Enerdrive EPO um, screen and also the inverter on off switch over here. Um, so basically, I'll go through the inverter on off switch first. I'm going to hit the power button on that, hold it down for a couple of seconds, beep, and then you usually hear an in a microwave. There you go, your microwave usually beeps. It's a sign that you know everything's up and running. Um, so that's turning my inverter on, which means now all my 240 volt um, power points, there's not one around that I can point to, um, will be working. Um, and I can also turn my AC system on if I wanted to um, and run any 240 volt appliances. Um, so I'll run you through the EPRO screen as best as I can. This is definitely not my department. Um, Andrew usually looks all this sort of stuff in my van. I just know everything works. Um, so the first thing you can see here is we've got the state, uh, the percentage of charge. Um, so at the moment it is saying the batteries are 79% charged. Um, it's showing us a positive number that's sort of flickering between 32 and 33 amps. So that means at the moment everything is pretty much turned off. We are getting 33 amps in from the solar panels into the system. We're in an off-grid situation here at the moment. Um, I can flick through tells me, um, oh, it looks like I might be recalculating. It usually it says there how many hours and minutes are left in the system if we go through at this, um, continue at this. Um, and there's a few other little volts and that sort of things in there. So secondly, I'll show you um, with your Enerdrive batteries, they're Bluetooth connected. So that means they connect through um, onto your phone via an app. So all you've got to do is download the Enerdrive app and I connected through to one of the batteries here. So something to really note with these is the inputs and outputs that it shows in amps is for one battery. So we only, we connect to each battery at a time. Um, 
So at this instance, it's showing us that there's 16 amps coming into the system. So we double that because we've got two batteries. So it means we've got 32 amps, which matches up with what is showing on my EPRO screen up here. Um, so it's showing it's a 200 amp hour capacity battery, 78%. A um, bit more information in this screen here, temperature that it's charging, how many cycles the batteries have done, um, a whole heap of stuff that I know absolutely nothing about. Um, notifications, so you do get alerts and that sort of thing in here if the batteries have any issues and then just contact if into if you need to call through to Enerdrive. Um, so I definitely think if you're hitting the road, any lithium batteries in your caravan should be um, Bluetooth compatible just to allow you to troubleshoot if you do have any issues later down the track. It is an absolute must. So what I'm going to do now, um, I'm going to just turn on the air conditioning system. Um, so just hit the power button on that one. So at the moment we're putting in 16 amps to one battery, so 32 in total. And as I turn my AC system on, up on my EPRO screen, it is gone to, we're now negative 60 amps. Um, and this app will eventually start to catch up. It's a little bit slower. Um, but yeah, you can see that it's real time of what you're using, what's being drawn, updates how long your batteries are going to last on this. Um, so that'll recalculate based on that percentage being used and percentage being put in. AC does fluctuate. We've got a really good video on um, how the AC systems in your caravans work. So I'll chuck a link to it as well up there. Um, but that's it on what we've done in the electrical panel. All right, so we've now got Craig here. Craig is our 12 volt caravan guru. If you're putting an inquiry in, quite often you talk to Craig or Josh, he'll do the run through with you. Um, so he knows all the technical questions. Um, so one of the most common ones we get asked is why do you need a transfer inverter? What is the transfer part of the inverter? Okay, so the transfer part of the inverter means that it integrates into the van much nicer than a traditional inverter. What it does is automatically detects whether there is power coming in from outside, from shore power. And if there is, it bypasses internally and supplies the van as it would normally when you're plugged into shore power. As soon as you unplug, all by itself, it straight away changes over to the battery supply and then turns the inverter on to supply the van with your 240 volt, meaning that there's no big ugly manual changeover switches that you need to touch. Cool. So basically, if we didn't have a transfer inverter, we'd have to flick a switch. 100%. You have to get up, open a cupboard, wherever the, the switch is, and physically turn the inverter off, flick the switch on, and turn the inverter on. Um, it just is a much clunkier process. Cool. Um, so on that, the, tr uh, the inverter, we get a 240 Sparky or electrician to come in and do their magic and give us a bit of paper at the end to say it's all authorised. What's the go with that? What happens? Yeah, so essentially to be able to have the transfer inverter power all of your existing sockets, GPOs, um, air conditioning, etc. It has to be integrated into the van, which is actually done by um, teeing into the existing safety switches. Um, so obviously to do that, it's working with 240 volt. There's lots of risk involved. Um, so only qualified personnel can do it. Um, so that's why we sublet in a 240 volt Sparky. He comes in, does his magic, terminates everything, makes sure everything's safe and to legal standards, um, and make sure it's not going to be a problem for you in the future. And you get a safety certificate, is that what they call it? Correct, yeah, 100%. So you get a safety certificate at the yeah. end of it, which just yeah. says it's compliant and it's done to Australian regulations. Yeah. Yeah. So something really important, we have heard of a lot of workshops not quite doing that step. Um, another one is um, the solar reg and DC to DC charger and how we sort of set it up inside, why we go with a solar reg and that sort of thing. 100%. So we see lots of systems come from van manufacturers that are poorly done. So what they do is they just have the solar bank on the roof running through the solar inlet side of the DC-DC and then they also have in the same circuit the external plug for your blankets etc. The reason that is an issue is for a couple of reasons. Um, one of which being you're not supposed to have different size and different wattage, different brand panels running through the one regulator because the smaller wattage panels will actually bring down the performance of the larger panels if that makes sense. So if you had a bank of say 200 watts on the roof and you only had a 120 watt blanket, it would actually reduce the overall performance which is obviously not what you want. Second reason we go 
for the separate solar rig over using the DC-DC for the roof mounted solar is so that you can have them both charging simultaneously while you're driving. So that means that the DC-DC will be taking you know, 40 amps from the car, charging the batteries that way. And then obviously depending how much solar you have your roof, it's also getting that. So let's just say you had you know, four 180 watt panels on the roof as well as the DC-DC charge. It means you're getting 80 amps of charge while you're in motion rather than just the standard 40. Some max input into the batteries is our end game for everything here. Um, something I've heard you talk about with caravans, and I know it's different from van to van, is we do a lot of recabling from what comes from the manufacturer. Why is that, and what do we typically recable? So, there's a few things we typically recable. Often, we find that the existing solar circuits to the roof are always undersized, um, which means you get voltage drop, which means that your solar's not working as efficiently as possible. So, that's a big one. We almost always recable to the roof. Um, regardless if we're putting new bank up there or not, um, just so you get maximum efficiency out of the solar. Um, another thing which we always recable to is the, I guess the input from the vehicle, so the Anderson plug on the drawbar. Uh, traditionally, vans will only have that wide straight to basically a voltage sensitive relay, which is inside most of the standard battery management systems. Um, and that's often always underdone. Quite often we see that's only six mil or something like that, um, which is not nearly enough to run a DC-DC charge at full steam. So always recable that, um, as well as obviously upgrading all the circuits to and from um, our new battery system to existing um, like fuse blocks and circuits as well. As always, if you do have any questions or feedback, drop them in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. YouTube thinks you should watch this one here. And if you'd like to check out any other caravans we've got set up for off-grid caravanning, watch this video down here.